Hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Zia. I'm a clinical psychologist specializing in transgender care. Welcome to my channel. Let's do a motivational video. I haven't done one of this in a while. And let's talk about confidence and how all of you can work on your confidence. As we know, confidence is something that is a challenge for a lot of us, a lot of individuals, whether you're struggling with gender dysphoria or not. Confidence is something that... Uh, it tends to just afflict and affect everybody, every individual on different levels. And uh, to be overly, completely confident person, um, I, I don't know if it's really fully possible because we live in society where we're always bombarded by the way we ought to be. Uh, all of you are bombarded by the way you ought to be in your gender. Uh, then you're bombarded by body images. If you identify towards female spectrum, what is that body supposed to look like? Towards male spectrum, what's that body supposed to like? What are non-binary folks supposed to look like? We're all bombarded by uh, how we're supposed to look and dress, whether you have tattoos or piercings. I mean, there's all these standards and social uh, constructs and norms and perceptions. So one way or another, we're always being bombarded. So confidence is not something that is a constant. It tends to fluctuate for a lot of us. Sometimes you may feel confident and feel like you can take on the world. Another day you can wake up and you can feel like a complete shit and like you're really um, um, falling apart and feel complete lack of confidence and being really, really hard on yourself. So confidence is a tough one, right? And a lot of you I noticed the mention in comments and mention on my short videos, uh, especially I did a short video about how to owning yourself. And I talked about the way to own yourself is not to give shit about what other people think, which by the way, is still very, very true. And I know it's very hard to achieve, but truly that's one of the best way to deal with things is not at least try to minimize uh, how much you care about what other people think about you and uh, what other people's opinions are of you. The more you minimize those things, the better off you're going to be. But a lot of you are still asking about confidence and comments as well. Uh, how to cultivate confidence, how to become confident, how can you empower yourself? Those are all tough things to, to think about because like I said, confidence is not something that just happens overnight. Some people might say that confidence uh, or self-esteem is a trait that we tend to build and we tend to uh, bring into our life depending on how we live in our lives. And I think to a certain extent, it's definitely true. What I do want to share with you is I want to be a little bit more transparent in this video and I want to share with you how I personally and I consider myself a very confident individual trying not to be cocky but I do consider myself a confident individual at this point in my life how I got to the point of acquiring that confidence I haven't always had it and what helped me along the way and I think this is going to be helpful to a lot of you. So confidence is, like I said, is something that, and by the way, if you're or somebody who's watching it and you have a lot of confidence, that's wonderful. Kudos to you. I think that's really great. Um, confidence tends to waver. For a lot of you who feel gender dysphoria, confidence is really going to hit you because you're going to have uh, feelings of incongruency about your body. And when we're not feeling good about our body and body is such an important primary factor through which we navigate the world, it can be really, really difficult uh, to feel confident in your body and just to feel confident when it feels so not in alignment with how you see yourself. A little bit transparency story. Uh, some of you already know this from my Who is Dr. D video. Uh, when I was 16 years old, I was diagnosed with osteosarcoma of right knee. Uh, that is quite aggressive bone cancer. So as a result, I had to get quite, I got like a lot of 16 chemotherapists and quite a lot of surgeries. And I have complete, complete uh, replacement of a knee. And not just replacement of uh, patella, for example, but I have a complete um big chunk of my leg is completely replaced by all metal hardware. Yes, I'm not only Edna from Incredibles, but I'm also apparently a bionic woman, go figure. Uh, so uh, my whole big chunk of my uh, bone has got replaced. I survived cancer. I, I beat the, that, uh, that monster to the curb. Uh, very proud to say that. 
Uh, but, you know, when you're 16 years old and you sick for two years, uh, your confidence will suffer. I'm not sharing the story to minimize your suffering or to say that having cancer is similar to struggling with dysphoria or to say that the scars that I have on my right leg, which is, by the way, starts at probably my thigh and goes all the way down uh, to my ankle. It's very big and gruesome. And I'm honestly telling you, not attractive scar. I'm not saying this to minimize your suffering. I'm not saying that gender dysphoria is the same thing. What I'm saying is that we all go through things in our lives that all tap into the same feelings and emotions. And for me, the step in the feelings of pain, the step in the feelings of loss, the step in the feelings of grief, and it's definitely tapped in the feelings of confidence. And for somebody who got well at 18 years old and just started living her life, for me, my lack and my inability to do so many physical things with that lack, I can't physically run, um, I can't bend it more than 90 degrees, it's painful sometimes to sit on airplanes, I'm not trying to uh, cry wolf here, but what I'm trying to say is that it has been a hindrance, it has been a burden in my life, and it has definitely felt like it is something that for sure affected my confidence um, in fact i dated somebody who when he saw my scar he one time said well you know there's plastic surgery to remove your scar and of course i ended up dropping that guy immediately after he said that to me but my scar is also my honor my scar is also sign what i've been through but let's get back to the confidence it really shattered my confidence on many many levels it shattered my relationship to my body on many 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 um, layers and the result my confidence suffered this is how i taught myself to look at the confidence we have confidence i'm gonna say confidence pie chart inside of us and the whole confidence tends to be comprised of different slices and it's not just for example, my leg or having legs without scar and, and beautiful legs that makes up the confidence. But there's vectors that make up our confidence that contribute to our overall feeling confident about ourselves. There are vectors such as perhaps our intelligence, our sense of humor, our personality, how good we feel about ourselves, whether we're good parents, whether we're good partners, whether we're good human beings. Uh, when we do something good for somebody else and it makes us feel good, that's another vector. Whether we're mindful individuals, that's another vector. When we see somebody on the street that is suffering and we go out of our way to help them, that's another vector. What I'm trying to say is that your confidence is so much more than just gender. What's happening is that gender is what is right now really affecting and really overshadowing. It's almost like this dark cloud that is... Uh, over your overall confidence chart and as a result it's affecting all other areas of your life and the more we start putting energy and the more we start thinking about that area that is we're feeling inadequate in the bigger it gets the more I started to think about my leg and how ugly my leg is and I can't wear high heels and I want to wear high heels and I can never find right shoes for a nice dress um, by the way, this day you won't find me in anything other than flip-flops. Um, but the more I started to think about all the things I can't, the more it sucked energy out of me, the more it made me feel less of. And I know the same is for you. The more you think about dysphoria and how it affects you and what it drops you off, the more you start thinking you're less of. So what I did, and I use this to this day, what I did, I said this, this is part of me, at least for me, I, this is something I can change, right? So unless I get plastic surgery on my scar, which I want, this is something that I can change. I unfortunately had cancer. It affected me. Fortunately, I survived, but I will have scar for the rest of my life. For the rest of my life, I won't wear high heels. For the rest of my life, I won't run. For the rest of my life, I won't bend my knee more than um, 95 degrees or 90 degrees. For the rest of my life, I won't be able to do that. I'm going to close the chapter on this right here because it is genuinely, I have to accept it. It is what it is. And I have to accept that I cannot actually change this. For some of you in relationship to your confidence, there's some things that you literally cannot change about yourself. 
And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to take all of this energy and I'm going to put it into some other areas of my chart and maximize it and blast it out. For me personally, that was my intelligence. For me personally, that was pushing myself to go and get PhD and go into grad school. And how many books I read and continue to read. I'm a huge book nerd. So for me, I told myself, Nat, you're going to walk into the room. And yes, you may not have the most beautiful legs in the room, but you'll have the most fucking beautiful brain. Yep. I seriously told this to myself and I began to work on it. And because I put so much energy into my intelligence, it eventually also overshadowed my confidence chart and made all other areas more confident. Of course, then I then started putting energy into other areas of my life that I want to better myself. Uh, for example, the content creation. I really genuinely love helping people. I love helping all of you. So I put a lot of energy into creating new and nuanced content all of the time. Why? Because not only it helps you, it also makes me feel good about myself. Yes, this is not completely selfless. And if there's a selfless act, show me one. But it makes me feel good about me. It makes me feel like in this world, I make some kind of difference. I make some difference with using my intelligence, my words, my expertise, my years of experience. And that makes me feel confident. Then my relationship to people in my life. I work on bettering my relationship to people in my life. And when I do, I feel confident as a result of it. Right now, I'm trying to get into discipline of making sure that I lift weights because I'm realizing how important body strength as you get older. And the more I manage my discipline, the more I feel good about myself. And that also makes me feel confident. So as you see to this day, nothing about my leg has changed. I still think it's ugly. My scar is horrendous. It has, it's probably got even worse as I got older. But no way. I'm confidently telling you in no way is it affecting the rest of my confidence because it has zero power over it. And the reason why it has zero power over it is because I took all of the power it has and I put all of that power into areas that I can manage, areas inside of me that I can elevate. And this is what I want all of you to do. If you're not feeling confident over certain areas of your life, elevate other areas of your lives. And those areas will elevate the rest of you. They will elevate the rest of you. The more you put energy in the areas where you're not feeling confident in, the more you're going to suffer. You have to elevate other areas. You have to work on other aspects of yourself so that you can feel good about yourself. Because I promise you, a lot of you, all of you have areas that can be elevated, that should be elevated. I know you're not feeling confident about your body right now, but tell yourself, I'm working on this. A lot of you are going through transition and you're not feeling confident yet. Tell yourself, in due progress, this is going to happen. Do not put more energy than this deserves. Take that energy and put it in other. What are your other aspirations? Do you want to go to grad school? Do you want to uh, read multiple books? Do you want to work out and be in a better shape? Do you want to be a better parent? Do you want to be a better partner? What other areas can you put that energy in and feel good as a result? A lot of times our confidence becomes really a low point in our life because we're neglecting all the other areas that we can be better at. This is my honest opinion to you. And this is honestly how I, over the years, continue to work on my confidence. Things, some things that are just energy suckers, I just say, move away. I'm going to focus on things that I can elevate in myself. What are the things I can better in myself versus focusing on things I can better or versus focusing on things that I know will better, but it'll take some time. I'm going to give it some time. I'm working on this. I'm not there yet, but here's where I'm at. So this is my motivational advice to you. Take all of that energy and start elevating other parts of yourself. Tell yourself, I may walk into the room and fill in the blank, and I may not be, and put in whatever you feel not confident about, but then put in what you want to elevate. For me, again, it was, Nat, you're going to walk in a room and you're not going to have the most beautiful legs, uh, as cheesy as it sounds. I mean, back then, for me, I was so young, it mattered a lot. But you're going to be the smartest cookie in a room. 
and and I loved it. I loved walking into a room full of people and knowing that the number of people that hold a doctorate degree in that room are very slim. That makes me feel confident because I achieved it and I made it. And that's a beautiful thing. So fill in the blank for yourself and then work on that things that you want to elevate and you'll see how your confidence will start to grow. So comment now below and let me know what area in your life you're starting to feel lack of confidence and what area in your life uh, you're going to uh, fulfill. And if you want to make it really fun, then write below, comment exactly in those filling in the blanks. I'm going to walk in a room and I may not be blank, but I will be, or maybe a lot of you are already am, then just say what it is. I am. Claim it. Claim who you are and own who you are. I'm always going to claim that I'm smart. I'm intelligent. Am I the smartest person on the planet? No, but I know that I'm smarter than quite a few people. And I'm very proud of that. And I'm going to claim it. And if it comes across the sky key, it comes across the sky key, but this is who I am and I own it. So own and claim your territory if you have already got there or if you haven't got there, work together and just see how good it feels to claim and own who you are. Remember, you're more than your gender. There's so many parts in you. You're much more and much bigger than just your gender. So comment below. Uh, I'll read all of your comments and I'll see you all next time. Bye.